Well, hi folks, and welcome to Art Tips with John, the show that teaches you how to build a creative business and also unleash your creative talent. I am your host, John Morris, the painter of memories, and welcome to today's show. In today's show, we're going to feature an excerpt from our most popular and downloaded art course to date, Polar Bear's Paradise, which is available, of course, at outreachart.org. Today, I want to show you how to create a nighttime painting and how it can create some amazing effects. Also, how adding in angles to your art can also create some 3D wonders. Enjoy today's show. Okay, and this is just going to lay the base ridge out of this painting. As I say, guys, I want you to take a little bit of a break now. We're going to let the painting dry, we're going to come back to it, and uh, when we do, we've got some sticks and twigs, we've got polar bears to outline and outlay, and then we've got a whole host of other detail which to put in, but you're doing fantastically. Take care, guys, I'll see you in class three. Okay guys, and welcome back to class three. While well, you've been gone, I've been touching up a little bit of this painting, just adding a little bit more definition to the trees, and starting to put some highlight over here. I've also changed and added a little bit more water in as well, just to start building up a little bit more. And as you can see now, that the illusion is that the water is coming towards you and pulling out, again giving that triangle effect. In this tutorial guys, what we're gonna be looking at doing is adding more definition and detail to the water, creating little ridges and shadow and shading, and hopefully putting the base outline of the polar bears in as well. So we've got plenty to do, plenty to crack on with. So come on in and let's begin. Okay guys, right. We are gonna come in using our little filbert brush here. We're gonna come into a little bit of water, a little bit of thermal blue, a little white. And you want this to be lighter, obviously, than the watercolour. And I'm just going to start from the central point and go side to side. In fact, because those trees are there, it actually needs to be quite a bit darker because there'll be less light that's getting through. Okay. And this is where you really want to follow and let your lines of perspective flow. Because this is how everything else is going to look and how it's going to be created. Okay, That's there. We have these little triangle effects now. And that's really going to help us now with the water coming towards us. We're going to do the same on this side as well. Maybe just a little bit darker on this side. Maybe there's a little bit less light that's coming through. There's a little bit more light that's coming through as we come further on out. Some more beautiful light. Sometimes we'd add the moon into the, the sky as well, but I don't think I will for this particular painting. Okay, kind of a little blue, a little black. And again, we're just going to touch up over here and all we're doing as you can see is just going side to side and as I'm going I'm just following the angles down I am not changing I see a lot of students at times do that because it's quicker but the problem is in doing that you end up changing the entire angle of your work brush strokes when they're going down have a very very different look to brush strokes that are coming up. Okay. Clean the brush and then we're just going to go into a little bit of black, a little phthalo blue and a touch of white. I'm going to make a little ridge on the end of the bank. Okay. And if it works and works well, this should again give another 3D effect. And we're essentially just pulling straight down because that colour is already wet. I'm just essentially pulling straight down. But it'll be darker again because there's less light that's hitting it. On the opposite side, it'll actually be lighter. Because 
There's more like this hitting you. Just pull down. Have a little bit more paint on the brush. And this is going to be pretty dark now. And see how that just creates just such an, another depth and we're just at the bottom. Just blend. If it's like a little waterline. Blend all that. Just like that. A little bit of black, a little bit of blue. You do the same here and you pull in straight down. Follow your angles. Follow your angles. And this actually has created a really cool effect because you can see the blue paint that, that I've, or, or the water that I've put across the, uh, the land actually now looks as if there is another ledge or something under the water's edge. And then over here, final one. I'm going to just come in. Turn the brush on its side because it is a little bit finer. And then just pull it down there. Super, right. Over here, we're going to come in with some blue, some white. I'm going to make a bit of a, almost like a bluey gray color. And just pull it down. That's a little bit too light. We're just laying in some base colour right now, that's all we're doing. And that's all we're interested in doing is just laying down that base colour. If you make your strokes smaller, look how much depth now is in this painting. Okay. If you find that the paint is get a little sparse, just go back in. And add some more. That's all I want you to do is just dab. It still wants to be a little bit wet. And then again at the base. Just come in and create some little water lines. Okay. We're going to come in with a little black paint. And just create a black water line where there's no sense of water. And this will help these little guys stand out so well. Again, we're just going side to side. Follow that around. And do the same here. And that just creates, see the depth now that we've got here. We're just going to touch up this little area over here. To my left. Coming with a little white, a little thalo blue, a little bit more white. Because again, there's more light that's coming over that side. I'm just going to gently graze across. I'm just going side to side. Side to side. There we go. If you change the angle of your brush, of course, it will change the direction that you work is fine. There we go. Well, oh, okay. it a wonderful effect. So you don't want to blend it out too much. You blend it out some, but not too much. Okay, I'm just going to go lightly side to side. It finishes up maybe over here somewhere. Look how lovely. 
then that's no reason. And then you can wait for it to dry, and you can come back in, and you can do all these different layers. You do some really, really cool things with this style of work. Okay, clean up the brush. Make sure it's good and dry. Okay, now it's test time because we're going to start putting Once in the pulpit. Do we need to start creating some different um, places and things for them to be. Now, in the photo that you saw earlier on, I had somewhat almost like an ice um, thing that was up here. I think the best way that it would make sense for me to do this is to have more of a tree or a series of trees that are coming around here for the polar bear to jump into. Okay, so your painting needs to make sense, essentially, in order for it to work well. So we're going to come in and we're just going to put some little trees in here. If I want to change it later on, I can touch into a little bit of water. Now for this, I'm using my little fan brush. You can use whatever brush works for you. Now we've got a tree here. I'm going to actually can just help this one just flow down a little bit more. That's why I did some water. So as it just flows a little bit more. Because what we're going to do is we're going to tell a story. And the story is that this polar bear is a daring little fellow. And he loves to jump off things. Okay. Just a bit in how far I want to bring it down. I may actually, in fact, move the snow up. Use the same brush, nice and clean. Little thalo blue, little black. Because with this, when we're putting in the polar bears, polar bears are obviously what colour? Polar bears are white. If we've just got a white winterland, then it won't make sense. And you'll be able to see the polar bears. And essentially the whole painting just won't make very much sense at all. So I'm just going to create some land over here. It's that simple. In fact, I'm going to switch brushes again. I'm going to come in with my medium sized filbert brush. Because we've got essentially three polar bears, we've got two cubs and one adult female, the mother. And it's really, really important that we give them enough space, obviously, to be able to, to move, to jump, to do whatever they're going to do. I also need to make sure I know exactly where I'm going to place them. Just to make this painting have some of the more correct angles, I just need to bring it out a little bit more. I've seen some artists in the past that do this kind of painting. And um, one of the things that they like to do is put in almost like climbing frames and all sorts of other stuff for, for polar bears and creatures to do. Which is great fun, don't get me wrong. It's great fun. But I've always got to ask myself, you know, is that story particularly believable? And sometimes it doesn't matter. It's a, a wee bit fun. But a bear jumping from a tree now, that's slightly more believable. Okay, so. The aim of where our polar bears are going to be is over here. We've got a little cub that's going to be down here. So before I go on to painting them, I need to make sure that we have enough contrast, enough snow and detail and whatnot over here. That's a really important thing. This reminds me of a painting I did a couple of years ago that looked very, very similar to this, but it was of a um, it was more of a cabin getaway kind of uh, idea. 
I was going with at the time. I found in 2013 onwards that I was working a lot on uh, little retreats and little get getaways and just pick up the side of the canvas. Right guys, and what we're going to do, keep it very, very simple, when we paint the polar bears we always paint a base colour in first, and the base colour is going to be always black, I find it works the best. Too concerned if I pick up some of that black from the from the tree. Okay, and again, just up that base colour, some black, some okay, pull down. And because that's going to be connected, that would make sense then if I have it connected, yeah. Gives the impression as well that it's up on some more of a ridge, which is kind of what we're after. So, it makes more sense. Go that way, come on with a little bit of black. Just down around that water's edge. Well, folks, we're out of time. I really hope that has helped you today. And uh, I've been your host, John Morris. Don't forget to check out outreachart.org um, for the brand new course, How to Build a Successful Art Business. If you're one of those artists that are desperately you know, wanting to know how to market, how to create Facebook ads, how to create an Etsy store, how to sell your artwork, we've got some great sales training there, some great tips and stories, um, how to build a product line, and so much more. Outreachart.org is the place for you. Well, the price, you might look at and think, oh, that's a little bit pricey, but compared to the cost, which is the overall price you're gonna pay by not getting it and having to do all the research yourself, you might look at that then and think, gosh, that's actually really cheap. We can get some great teaching from this and it only costs this and before you know it, you're well on the way. And it's a blueprint, basically, of all the questions I wish I had had the answers to when I started 17 years ago. Okay, so guys, as I say, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I know I'm asking you to do a lot of things. Outreachart.org, head there. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube. And uh, we will see you for next week's show. I have been your host, John Morris, the painter of memories. And this has been Art Tips with John. Have an awesome day, guys. Take care.